Hey everybody, Shep here. Well, you've seen it in a lot of videos, and I've been meaning to uh, make this video for a while now, kind of tell you guys the story behind it, but today I thought it'd be a good day to make a video talking about my Case International tractor. So this is a Case International 245, um, not to be confused with a Magnum 245. Um, that's a joke because a Magnum's a great big farm tractor and this is just a little compact tractor. But this is a 1987 model and um, it's a pr pretty nice tractor overall um, as far as condition. It's uh, one of those, what do you call it, like 50-50 where it looks really good from 50 feet away or from 50 miles an hour. But uh, yeah, I uh, absolutely love this thing. I highly recommend one of these if uh, if you need a small tractor for your homestead or you know smaller jobs on a farm or something. That they are uh, great tractors. So in a little over a month, the end of September, I will have had this thing for seven years. So I've done a lot with it, a lot of gardening. Obviously, you guys have seen the videos, plowing, disking. Uh, bush hog some with it um just really really good tractor um never really had a whole lot of issues with it i'll talk about those here in just a little bit but overall i love this tractor um at some point i want to get another tractor here on the homestead but at the same time i'm never going to get rid of this one just because this was kind of this wasn't the first tractor i ever had but it uh it's the first that i've really done a whole lot with but yeah i love this tractor so this video is kind of going to be this first part of it's going to be me talking about it and then the second part is going to be kind of like a review of the tractor showing the features and stuff like that if you're interested in that but yeah so the funny thing about this tractor is the reason i can remember when I, the day that I got it so well was because I got this the week before I got married and I did not tell, uh, did not tell my wife about it, who would, you know, my fiance who would later be my wife, I did not tell her I was getting this. So me and, uh, me and dad kind of figured we needed a tractor here on the homestead and uh, kind of started looking around and looking for stuff that was really a lot more newer than this, a lot more expensive. But um, we saw this on Craigslist. That obviously dates uh, dates the time frame that we got this, but this was uh, on Craigslist. So um, saw it, it looked pretty nice. It was, you know, within our price range. My dad and uh, his cousin, which his cousin's the one, that uh, gave us the, the uh, Troy Built Horse Tiller. I know uh, gotten a lot of subscribers from that video, a lot of views from that video. So, same cousin that uh, gave us that, knows a lot about tractors, was mechanic, all that, all that good stuff. They went and looked at it one day. I was I was working that day, and uh, they went and looked at it and thought it was you know for the money it was probably not going to find a whole lot better, and. The only thing they noticed was that the clutch was about to go out in it. It was, the clutch was pretty much shot. And we kind of dickered about that with the guy that owned it. And a couple of days later, I bought, uh, bought this tractor. Funny because I never actually saw this in person until it was at our house, but I trusted, you know, what they thought of it. So went ahead and got it. But, uh, the guy that we bought this from, he had an apartment building, and he had bought this to use. It, had, it came with a, a blade, a greater blade that I've got on the back of it. He had it, and what he used it for was for uh, scraping snow in the parking lot of his apartment building. I think he had only had it like two or three years, and the last year that he had it, the winter around here wasn't even bad enough that he didn't use it. With that being said, I really think that is why the rims have a lot of rust. And then these here, the uh, the floor part of it, those were all rusty. 
I painted those up, but um, I think that's why, like I said, the rims and all that was so bad because, uh, and the, uh, a bunch of, you know, the, the three-point arms and stuff because of salt that they used on the parking lot. I'm sure that's why they're so, so rusty. But anyway, um, so we got it, and I've had it here on the homestead ever since. I really love, love this tractor. Like I said, I did not uh, tell my wife that I was going to get this, and that was a, that was a, a little surprise, but she got over it, and um, yeah, I guess the rest is history. But, so, really, we didn't even put a clutch, because like I said, I've had this for almost seven years now, and we didn't put the clutch in it until probably, I don't know, three years ago. It, uh, kind of for what I was doing, it was holding up fine, but then, like, bush hog and bigger stuff were really disking is where I know it got so bad the last year that I before we placed it with I mean you couldn't go up a hill without the tractor just not wanting to climb up it and uh, our homesteads you know only got one hill and it ain't even that big of a hill so so yeah um did that to it which that um that's when I painted these floor parts of it when we had the tractor split in two because Obviously, had to take all this off to split it and uh, replace the clutch. And um, probably the second year that I had it, I came out one day and in the pole barn underneath it, there was just a massive, you know, puddle of coolant. I thought, well, that's neat. So, um, you know, took the took the radiator out and we found this we found this guy around here that um this like i said this this was probably 2000 2018 or so that this happened but he had been he's a radiator guy and he had he, he was pretty old at this point like probably in his like late 70s early 80s and he um he had been like a radiator worked in radiator shops and he's kind of retired and did stuff just at his house and uh, he had done that since the 1950s. So this guy knew a thing or two about radiators. And he told us, he said, well, I can fix it, but it uh, it's probably not going to, uh, to you know, be fixed for very long. Your best thing is just to, you know, get basically get a new one. He said, I can, you know, make one. So we did that. It was a couple hundred bucks, I think, at the time. Did that. And then, uh, let's see, that's really all that, uh, all, really all we've done, the radiator and the, uh, the, uh, clutch, but when we got it, I think it had 850 hours, so you still see, so it's, I mean, it's still got plenty of life left in it, my cousin said, you know, these kind of diesel engines are good for several thousand so it's got a lot of life left in it for what i do here on the homestead putting you know less than 50 hours on it a year it's uh i uh i just absolutely love this tractor so okay so that's my story time part of it um <clears throat> now we'll show the features so this is a it's got a Mitsubishi three-cylinder diesel. And uh, it's a really good little engine. To be honest, uh, this tractor is made by Mitsubishi, so I'm not sure really if there's anything anything about that's Case International other than the sticker. But either way, uh, I've always had a thing for internationals case internationals farm all red tractors in general so that was kind of another reason i was drawn to this but it's got three cylinder diesel this has it's got a triple range high mid and low and then it's a three speed got the pto it's got a 540 and there's something you can do to it that makes it a thousand whatever um but it's just a really, really solid little tractor. It, uh, 
came with these suitcase weights which are super handy when you got something heavy on the back of it like the disc or the bush hog that's really about the only times i leave the weights on it because otherwise you know it just makes the front heavier and harder to turn but the nice thing about this tractor is it has a foot throttle right there and then it's got your normal throttle which for the most part a lot of stuff i do i just use the foot throttle but you can also do that and uh, it keeps it at con constant speed of course you know you got your lights and your it's got a it's got a horn which my daughter really likes playing with that likes beeping that when we're riding around on it but obviously it's got uh three point controls and uh three point hitch which is just what i need for my homestead so like i said i absolutely love this tractor if you ever come across one of these and you can get them at a decent price uh buy it because it's just really good I've been just real happy with it the whole time I've had it. Um, after I got this a few years ago, my neighbor, he has the smaller version, the 235, which is physically a smaller tractor. I think the engine, it's got like, it's got a little bit less horsepower, but it's a neat little tractor. Maybe if you guys are interested sometime, maybe I can get his permission and we can make a video showing it, maybe comparing the two of them, but... That's going to conclude this part of the video. I'm going to take you inside and uh, show you something else. Okay, for this next part of the video, I thought I'd actually tell you some stats about the tractor. I got these two things here that I found on eBay. And really, they were super cheap for what they were, only a couple dollars a piece. But, so I uh, snatched them up. So this is, would have been like the little flyer thing for my tractor. So it has 21 engine horsepower and 18 PTO. Some of these were hydrostat, mine's of course a gear, but some of them were hydrostat, like my, my neighbor's, his 235 is hydrostat, and um, it has a lever that the more you push it, the more, the faster it goes. Here's all the, here's all the specs. Of course, they had them in four-wheel drive, they had them with loaders, and, uh, I just really, really like this tractor. Try to go over this slow, so if you guys want to really read any of this or learn about it. So I know when I was looking it up um, before I bought it, there wasn't really a whole lot of videos of these on, on YouTube. So if you want, you know, you can just pause and pause and read this information about it <laughs> for anybody that's interested. Because I didn't really know a whole lot about it when I got it. So that's kind of the you know model specific sheet. And this is just the 200 series tractors in general. This is a 235 like my neighbor has. It's physically quite a bit smaller. So they had, you know, all kind of all kind of neat neat stuff. I'd really like to have um, you know, maybe another one of these. So, the 235 is 18 horsepower. Some of them had a mower. That'd be pretty handy. Have one of those that's hydro. And the 245, that's what I've got. They were 21. So, engine horsepower-wise, they're three horsepower more. And But overall, the, the 245 is built on a bigger frame. The 235 is a lot smaller tractor. Then they had a 255 which is a 24 horsepower, which um, I've never actually seen a 255, but from comparing the specs, they appear to be exactly the same as the 245 that I've got, except they've got the bigger bigger engine. Um, has three more horsepower. There's one with a loader. I'd really like to have that. It'd be, uh, be super handy. And then this book doesn't cover it because I guess it was more of a specialty thing. But there was actually a 265, which I didn't know about for a long time until I saw a picture of one. And a 265 is basically a, basically like the tractor I've got, except that it's a high crop and it's offset. So like a farm off cub or a 140 or even, um, I'm trying to think with the international, the international that and they had another one. 
after the one before it, I think it was the 274, I think. I might be wrong about that, but it was an offset tractor like a farm all cub. And those, I've seen some of those pictures online and ones for sale, and they go for a lot of money. I guess they, you know, have a demand with uh, vegetable farmers and that want an offset tractor, and they probably didn't make a whole lot of them. But uh, so there, it, there is a 265. And then the biggest one here in the, the uh, series was the 275. It's got a 31 horsepower. And I'm guessing, guessing by pictures and uh, by some of the specs that it's a much, much bigger, bigger tractor. But, you know, it's kind of neat when you can get these books so you can learn a lot about them. Um, if there's anybody out there watching this video that wants to know anything specific about these, if I can answer it, I'd be glad to if you want to comment. Um, here, I'll try to get a nice shot of this that has the stats for all the, all the tractors. There's somebody out there that might find it interesting especially that's nice that tells you you know the speeds for which uh which gear you're in at rpm speed so some of this stuff's just neat to know probably a lot of people won't care about it but if but if you are interested because like i said when i first when i first uh got this i didn't know a whole lot about tractor couldn't find a whole lot about it but so hopefully that might help somebody out there but I really like this tractor. Um, I think it's awesome. I know I've said that before, but that just really emphasizes how much I love it. I'll never get rid of it. Um, it'll be here on the homestead forever as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, hope you guys like this video. I know it's a little bit different than uh, normal, but I've, like I said, I've been wanting to make this video for a while. If there's anybody out there that wants to know anything more about this tractor, just let me know and I'd be happy to answer any question that I can, because if I can help somebody out there learn something about something they're looking at buying, especially one of these, I'll help you any way I can. So, well, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope everybody out there has a great day.